uh, Kipper here, back at Raw HQ. Got us another guest for the video podcast, and I think some of the uh, Bay of Plenty locals will know this fella. Uh, a few of the sort of steamer hardcore will probably remember this fella as well. Uh, he's a good mate of mine, known him for... Ooh, Going on 10 years now. Cuts now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, uh, so we've got Carl Axton's in here uh, all the way from France. Uh, welcome, bro. Kia ora, bro. Nice to, be, nice to be here. That's the one. Uh, so I just want to start, bro. Like what, what's going to happen is I just want to talk a little bit about uh, your background. We'll talk a little bit of code, but yeah. that's not really the main focus of this podcast. It's yeah. more around sort of mindset, uh, training, yeah. and then how you go about achieving uh, different goals in your life and uh and i throw a few couple of cracking jokes in there too marbury so few, don't worry about careful. that <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah if you just want to tell the audience bro a little bit about yeah. where you're from even start back to the rep stays and then uh and Way then back. yeah and then come back see, see, see if you can do it in a couple of minutes and, and yeah. bring us right forward from your life and reps all yeah. the way through to where you are now bro oh sweet yep uh, yeah, kill to everybody. Uh, Carl Exton's. I um, I actually grew up in South Auckland, Papakura, but I uh, moved to Reparoa when I was, or just a just a baby still. So originally, my family's a farming family, dairy farmers. Um, yeah, since day one, been down there. Uh, started playing for Reparoa Rugby Club uh, since under fives. Yeah. So yeah, barefoot. Be, barefoot. Um, Frosty ground. Oh yeah, those minus fives in the morning. <laughs> yeah, those were pretty good. <laughs> and then went to Broadland School. It was just a little, uh, just a little primary school down there. Only about sixty people. And then through on to Ripple College. Played first fifteen since we were about oh, thirteen or fourteen years old. <laughs> there wasn't that many people to play for the first fifteen. So if it, if you were free on a Saturday, I think you just got the call up. <laughs> were you playing against some big boys then when you were yeah. on the yeah, yeah, there was a few big boys. Yeah. I sort of I was actually just put on the wing to start with, eh? When oh, I was yeah? At, yeah, yeah, when I was about yeah. that age. So yeah. with old Scott Curry, he was one of the older boys at the time. But yeah. and then so we went right through first fifteen and then we came over to Tauranga Boys for a uh, season with yeah. old one of our mates and yeah, that was an awesome experience. Played Super Eight rugby. Mm. Definitely a bit of a step up from Rip Raw first fifteen, but <laughs> so you just went to you just went to Tauranga Boys for one year. Yeah, yep, yep, just one season. We had the opportunity to come over because the Bay of Plenty Academy was based in Tauranga. So uh, at the time, a guy uh, Dean Jennings was the academy manager, and he oh, yeah. gave us the opportunity to come over here. So it was good though. Mm. Definitely different, but it was awesome. Hard. Um, left school, uh, moved to. Moved to the mount, went to Tauranga Sports. I think that's where we sort of met each other as well with mm. a few of the boys. Had to give them a clip around the ears a yeah, couple yeah. of times. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Can muck around too much, these fellas. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we, after that, I think we played a few years of Bay of Plenty for ITM Cup and made our way through. Done one year at the Chiefs, Chiefs wider squad. And mm. then uh, the year after I played ITM Cup, I didn't pick up another one. So we decided to go to France, and um, been in France for five years. Five years now? Yeah, yeah. Far out, that's gone quick, bro. So we just got back into New Zealand, so been in New Zealand for about three months now, so mm. loving being back and enjoying summer. Mm. Me? Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, for just a little bit more context in your in your footy stuff, bro, uh, from your time at uh, Tauranga Boys, who are the who, who are the notable boys out of that team, that first fifteen team when you're in seven form that have sort of kicked on a little bit? Um, so we had there was Sam, mm. Sam Kane was there. We had Chaihe Toma who had a few matches for Bay of Plenty. Aaron Carroll, yep. who was just the captain of the Bay last year, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez, who else was there? Was Nate in your team? Yeah, Nate younger? Harris. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he was a hooker. Yeah, that's right. Nakiva me. Who played oh, for the yeah. Bay and he's in oh, Japan he now. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. a ten. Little I think. nugget. Shout out to Sanger. Yeah, old Sanger. <laughs> yeah, we had a good crew there that year. Um, That's a pretty mean team, eh? How did yeah. you fellas go that year? Oh well, for the super, I think it was for the Super Eight or no, who qualified to go through to the. You know how it's out of Rotorua Boys in Tauranga, and mm. we lost that uh, uh -huh. first up, uh, like uh, early on in the season. But right, 
towards the end we ended up our claim to fame for that season was that we oh we actually did we come second or something but we beat Hamilton boys at year so that was a bit of our claim to fame ah uh, man yeah but who was uh, skipper of that team Tarangan boys jeez I can't even remember you remember can't remember I can't even remember to be mustn't honest. have kicked on the, the bro <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't uh, remember that. It's a while ago now, eh? Uh, been Nate. Okay, and then you. Oh, yeah, it might have been. Eh? Uh, then you. Uh, you played under twenty, eh, bro? Yep. Yep. Uh, how, how many years? One year. Yes. Yeah, so we played schoolboys, New Zealand schools under eighteen. Yep. Yep. Two years, and then uh, under twenties here. Yeah. Right. So I blew my knee out on. Uh, oh, that's right. In the two thousand nine schoolboys. Mm. I blew my knee out, done an ACL and LCL for reconstruction. And then I had a year off and got back into it and then went to uh, New Zealand 20s. Right. But when we played at the Steamers, you were, were you captain for how many years were you captain yeah, there? Was like, I was just trying to think on the way down, but I think I may have done it like two, a couple two, of years, two eh? Years? Yeah. I would have only been 23 or something. Mm. Yeah. And had you been... Just because I, I want to talk a little bit about leadership with you as well, yeah. but um, were you skipper at, like schoolboys or twenties? Yeah, like that? so I think I was my first year when I was young at schools. I wasn't, and the second year I was the captain. But that's when I blew my blew my leg uh, out. I see. And I only captain one game for the twenties against Argentina or something. But okay, yeah, all right. But so because. Uh, <coughs> There's a few things I want to touch on today. So being that it's January, I've been speaking to people a little bit about their their personal goals yep. like that they've had in the past and that yep. they've achieved, maybe some of them that you've failed at. I yep. uh, want to talk about how what your process is for that. Um, the other thing that I want to speak more specifically to you, uh, X personally, is um, about your, your work ethic and how that's played a part in mm. where you are today. But let's just touch on the leadership stuff first mm. because... Um, like we say, guys, I, I played with this fella at, at club rugby, and he was he was my captain then, and he's a he's a bit younger than me. Uh, he was my captain at Bay of Plenty, um, and I've always seen this guy as a bit of a bit of a leader of men, and uh, it, it's not even uh, taking the piss. This, this he's got a, he's got a fair bit of manner about him. So I want to sort of touch on that stuff. What why yeah. do you think, in your mind, bro? Why why do you think? you've sort of been thrust into those leadership roles in the past. Is there anything that you can put your finger on there? Yeah, I don't really know. I guess coming from Rip Royal College, like a small school, we didn't really have that many boys, so you sort of just got put into that role, you know? Like, I guess you were probably half decent at rugby, so you just sort of get put in that category. But, yeah, a lot of the positions, like being bay captain quite early on and, like... In, in the piece, I was only 23 or 22, and I sort of look back now, and I sort of realise, sort of just still a boy at that age, eh, really, mm. and you haven't hadn't really experienced much. But I don't know. I guess I uh, got the ability to have those relationships with different boys. I don't. Know, it doesn't matter where you really come from or what. I guess I can sort of build a relationship with most people, and mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I don't think I've got any great ability at uh, at. Uh, doing great things but it's just I guess making people feel comfortable and in, in their environment and right yeah well I think like from my personal experience with you and and from what I understand from my sort of yeah. limited experience and leadership roles I think uh the, the the main thing that always struck me was that you you would always do um things that you would you would always do first what you would expect of yeah, the other yeah, boys, yeah. you know, yeah, and the, yeah, and the other sure. boys could trust you to to do your job. Yeah, so yeah. obviously, you know, being a, a quality football player comes before being a leader on the field. So yeah. you always had that uh, that sort of footy brain and, and yeah. the ability to throw, throw the old carcass around. Yeah. So <laughs> that always helped you. But um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right with that communication stuff. Um, you do. You seem to be able to get along with a lot of people, eh, bro? Like you're yeah. you're quite good with the old fellas in the yeah, in the bar yeah. after yeah. games, and and I, I don't know if that's sort of from coming from a smaller community where you're sort of like you you do talk to the whole spectrum of people, you know, older yeah. people because that's my my dad's mates, the old cockies and that sort of thing, eh? My dad's <coughs> uh, dad's mates, so you talk to those older fellas, but you also talk to the younger fellas in the club because they're sort of like aspiring to come up, so. 
I guess that was a good thing about growing up in a smaller community. But mm. yeah, and and I guess as a leader, you can't really tell people or ask people to do things that you're not expected to do yourself. So mm, I've done it a couple of times. <laughs> so, yeah, make your fucking tackle. Yeah. <laughs> the next one I miss. <laughs> Sorry, boys. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me. I've had old yeah, end up yeah. a few times by yeah, under the post for a Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done that too. I think we've all done that. <laughs> so, but, uh, okay. Well, no, that's and I guess that reflects as in training as well. You know, like mm. if some fellas just see that you're not really they they see you keen to play the game, but not see see uh, on a Thursday or Tuesday wanting to train. They sort of yeah, this fellas bloody yeah, he's all shit. He's all shit. But yeah. It's a bit of a fine balance, eh? When you're trying to sort of manage your body as well and trying yeah. to get into everything, but yeah. Well, that's yeah. A, that's sort of the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, bro. And it's a good segue, <coughs> I guess, into the way that um, I've always seen you in your training. You know, in off season and pre season, during season, you always um, been pretty good at uh, emptying the tank and yeah. you know putting everything out there on the field, or yeah. if you're running up hills or. Yeah. You know, in the weights room or whatever, you've always been a, a very hard trainer, bro. Do, yeah. do you put that um, down to coming from like a farming background as well? Yeah. Or where where, where do you it, think that work ethic comes it, from? I think it may have a bit of an influence on it, eh? Like, I guess we've always, as we grew up, like being young fellas, we've always watched my old man, like, he always worked hard every single day of his life, so that's just what we sort of thought was the norm. Mm. And I guess when we started playing or training for rugby we didn't really have much of an idea because we didn't have gyms or we didn't have people telling us this is what you should do so mm. I guess we just thought if you're training it's got to be full noise so yeah. and if it hurts I guess that's good for us but you sort of look back now and it's sort of like oh <laughs> someone sort of told us actually how to do it right we might have saved ourselves a bit of hurt and <laughs> it got a bit better but no that's probably yeah. it's a better way I think I think uh, you know looking back on like my rugby career, I think I've been told many more times to go harder, <laughs> go than, harder. than to soften up. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you think back, when I, whenever I think back on people that are told to, you know, calm down a little bit yeah, and yeah, uh, training, yeah. they're, they're usually the guns, bro. They'd go, like, they'd go good. Well, shout out to Terence Hepatema, Test Match Terence. <laughs> <laughs> bro, and I've done it. Every bro, training. Bro, a couple of trainings with old point as well, bro. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to get on the hit, hit, hit shields when the bro's doing yeah, his yeah. tackle practice. But yeah, uh, He won't go any lighter <laughs> yeah, or any easier at you. Yeah, bro, so um, that's quite interesting. So what, yeah. uh, what else do you think? plays a part because what I'm trying to get out of this X is that yeah. um, when we train here people at you know we train people here at Raw HQ yeah. a, a lot of um, you know we have ex rugby players or ex athletes yeah. come through and they can go pretty hard yeah. and like there's there's plenty of people that haven't played sports that can go hard yeah. but I think like I, I'd say over 50 percent of the yeah. general population that haven't played in a competitive mm. sporting sort of space, yep. um, sort of don't have a real grasp on on what what hard work is, yeah, you yeah. know. So yep. it's and uh, I just w- sort of want to try and pick your brain a little bit on on yeah yeah I, I what you think about that. Like I know and I, I like I know that technique and all that sort of stuff is massive mm. and that, but like. At the end of the day, eh, like nine times out of ten, if you like, if you're into it and you go fully and you're working hard, as like putting everything into it, I guess like the out- outcomes like still going to be positive. Yeah. And like, and I guess if you can get into technique and knowing what you're actually doing and like all that sort of stuff early on in the piece, that's awesome. But sometimes for me, and that's just how I think, I just mm. think sometimes you just need to grit your teeth and sort of get on with it and like. Oh, yeah, and, and, you, and you'll get and get into your mahi, and, yeah. and then generally it'll come yeah. sooner or later. Can't go know? wrong with hard yeah, hard yeah. work. Eh? I'll probably never been the most technical, the most like, at the best of most things, but I think so if you, you just give up. it a good crack, you know, like yeah. half the time it'll come off. But yeah, no, I think bro, I think it's a well. Yeah. From, I know that like for you guys at home that. This guy, he's one of the most humble fellows you'll meet. So he, he, I know he's uncomfortable speaking about, you know, what, what he's good at and that kind of thing. But do you think that, what, like, if you were to put a, you know, a, a bit of a balance, you know, a, a score of uh, 
of a balance between your your talent and yeah. your hard work. You know, if you were to say yeah, like yeah. somebody had it was fifty percent talent and fifty percent hard work to, yeah. to get them where they are, where do you think you you lie in that area? Because oh. I, I, I'll, I'll give you an example, someone like Johan Badu. <laughs> I'm gonna go 98-2 in the way of hard work, bro. Oh, that's a, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm a prime example, bro, because that fella is you know just what I mean? a, he the, just works the, all day. He can't jump over a skipping rope, bro. <laughs> but they've but already played super. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so no, that's a that's so a it gets you a long way. Yeah, but, absolutely. And, 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 and he's a prime example, of it, man. Like he just he's up to the death, uh, and like. And well, then on the other side, bro, there's the Joe Tupi. He, he, yeah. He's a two ninety eight. <laughs> 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 bro, that no, right. Do you know well, the line out straight? Yeah, I know it. Yeah, Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> so where, where do you think you lie in terms oh, of like geez. talent? It's a it's a hard it's question. It's hard one, eh? Because I think like I've still got a look like skills, like uh, all right skills. I can pass the ball, catch a ball, mm -hmm. not too bad. But I'm not fast. I'm not. I don't think overly uh, powerful. Like just like natural. So I think there's a bit of grafting in there for me, for sure, eh? I yeah. think I'm a bit of a grafter, for sure. Do you 50-50, or do you reckon you're a bit more, more grafter? Probably a bit more grafter, I'd say, eh? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty know. mean. 50-40, I, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. 63-37. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one, bro. It, it is a hard one, bro. Like, what do you reckon you are? Oh, 100 on both ends. <laughs> <laughs> 100 percent but i'm zero zero now <laughs> nah uh I, I just think that it's a i don't know interesting it, yeah. it's always something that pops into my brain especially with, with where most you, players personally we it's inter interesting we they actually you, where they think they sit there you know you like yeah where i probably could think no nah, no nah, that fella's all talent you know he's awesome and then he probably think no nah, no nah, i'm a battler man yeah yeah, so, yeah no, i, I think you're right there bro so um with uh let's touch on I guess a little bit more of your strength and conditioning yep. sort of thinking, not like outside of, because now that we've established that you, you can mahi pretty hard, yeah. um, are you, is, is strength and conditioning something that like you enjoy, bro, or is it just sort of part of the job for you? Because I know you do yeah. a lot of work like in the yeah. off season and you, you're always hitting the roads or yeah, the hills yeah. and that sort of thing. So is it, is it? part of your life that you enjoy or, or nah yeah I, for me it is eh to be honest mm. uh, a lot of, I know a lot of rugby players like they say as soon as I finish footy then that's me I'm like I won't train anymore but for me like I think it's just a bit of a a mental thing for me as well you know like I, I get in a good sesh and then I feel like good for the after that I feel mm. like I've done my mahi I'm, I'm away again but mm. for a lot of guys they say nah as soon as I'm done rugby I'll, that's me I'm going to stop but uh, I, I think even when I do stop rugby, I'd like to think that I'd keep in like doing something. But yeah, but, yeah. Um, so why? Uh, yeah, uh, what age did you start like either lifting weights or running? I, I assume running yeah, started earlier. For running you. was early on, like it would have been thirteen or twelve, I guess. Mm. But like, like I said before, in reps we didn't have a gym or anything mm. like that. So. Uh, I think it may have been about like when we were about 16 or 17, we started commuting to Rotorua. Mm. Rotorua each morning for like an academy, Bay Academy, maybe two times a week. But before that, bro, it was just like running hills. We'd go out the farm, run hills. Uh, me and a couple of the boys that we used to, for our first job, we used to throw hay. So yeah, right. here's us, like no no direct relation to play, rag, making you a better rugby player, but we thought, oh yeah, no, this must be hard. So yeah. We thought, yeah, throwing hay, that's got to make us stronger, but I don't yeah. know if it did. Well, I don't, I don't know, but there's something to be said about the, uh -huh. like all the farm boys. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, I, sometimes I think like farm strength is a lot more transferable to the rugby yeah, field yeah, than, than gym strength, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. There's, there's something about that sort of, I don't know, awkward, Moving, awkward yeah. sort of movement or, or awkward like hay bales. Picking or whatever, up, you know, putting picking there, up, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was and that was tough, and I guess that was sort of like our first sort of thing. We thought, we thought this was training really, but that was a bit old school <laughs> mentality. But it was good fun, and mm. ach, we actually did some work though. Holy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ach, stack a bale of like three thousand bales in the shed one day. Start at midday, we finish about six 
and then we'd go and pick up another 3,000 bales. Is, who's this, you and Maddie and AJ and that? Or? No, it was me, Sammy, and our other best mate, Josh. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And so each load, you'd be on the back of the truck, and it'd be like, there'd be a lift in that, so you'd just be stacking uh, pallets, but one would always drive, so then we'd all just do their old rotation. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so it was... That, that's quite cool, bro. That's quite yeah. a cool, like, foundation to have, a bit of yeah. running, and then just, like you say, bro, just being able to dig in and... yeah. And, and get hard work done there. Eh? I think it goes a long way. Yeah, but. yeah, absolutely. Sort of in a <coughs> time where you think, man, I just wish this would stop, but then you can still go like an extra, what, five hours or something, eh? But, hard. Um, and then after that, we actually, a local guy turned his old bus station into a um, into a gym and oh, put like yeah. a couple of humble bars and uh, we had a bench there and yep. we'd cruise down in there, but... Like I said before, we didn't have a clue what we we're up to. We just sort of chucked on some weight and then yeah, thought we were in. Push it as many times yeah, as you yeah, can. Yeah. That's how we all started. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. crack up. Yeah, that no, was good though. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Um, okay, bro. So just to touch on, uh, like I said before, it's the beginning of the year and you wanna, uh, I want to give some perspective um, for the audience about how people go over their own goals if you if yeah. you set goals not everybody does yeah, yeah. and what the process is for it like you've probably seen my old man's one his one's out the gate yeah, but he's, that uh, was mean. <laughs> that was mean. so i'm just interested to hear like when you were that young fellow like i guess you because you went to tauranga boys for seventh form yeah. i can see that in probably your whanau's eyes or your eyes yeah. you, you could see like a pathway for yourself yeah, yeah, absolutely. you must have been pretty good at reps and then yeah did you from way back then, did you start setting goals about what you wanted to do, or did you have a yeah. picture of like wanting to pay pro- play professionally? Or yeah, I, th- I think for me, I didn't. I never wrote anything down, eh? But like, mm. my mum would always say, "Oh, have you written anything down? What do you want to do for the year?" But like, I guess in the back of my head, I always like I knew, mm. and like even at reps to make New Zealand schoolboys, that I didn't have anything written down. But that was my sort of my goal. But and even like now. I think I should write some stuff down, but in the back of my head, I've always got something. Oh, yeah, I want to do that. I want to do that. But mm. I, sh- I should really be a lot more specific in it. So I actually well, yeah. you, you could like it might help you, but yeah. it, it might not. Bro, Every, everybody's different because my thinking for for your stuff is, um, you know, some people have to write stuff down mm. and then write down how to make that stuff happen. Yeah, so yeah. so write down like a routine or yeah, whatever. Yeah, so they make sure they're ticking it off. Yeah, yeah. so. I, I think like you know writing down a, a goal is all good mm. but achieving it or doing the work that's needed yeah, to yeah. achieve to achieve that is is yep. a different story yeah I got gotcha, you but yeah. like we say like y- you've your work ethic is yeah. is one of your strong points so yeah. it's like you're skipping the middleman and yeah, you already yeah, do yeah. the job that you need to and that's you know? why I think like for me like if I say that okay I need to go and do this work or I need a mahi up now and then that's just like there's no question about it for me like I'll just go okay I'll go do it Mm. so it's not really like I have to go to a place to be motivated or to could, be do you think you could say go on like a, a big bender and then train straight away <laughs> the next day bro or <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just trying to get mentally get myself out of that hole that I just put myself in really eh? <laughs> oh. Fano this is one of his other big strengths yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This fella can he, yeah. he can sink him and then he can turn up. Oh, jeez, <laughs> the amount of time. I don't know. And then after that, hey, eh, during the time, it's like, yeah, this is good fun. And then, oh, well, the first session back. Bro, why I, do I do this to bro, myself? I've seen you, bro, like go handy on the drink, bro, and then just rock up and do some <laughs> out the gate running session, or not the not the triple up the mount ones. Oh, Holy, bro, it, I don't know how you can do that, bro. You're you're certainly mentally tougher than me because yeah, <laughs> if, I, if I have eight beers bro I'm in bed for two days uh, <laughs> bro yeah, I don't know what that's about eh? like I just think to myself oh you want to go hard now you've got to go and train is hard it like, is it like a little bit punish yourself yeah I think it is eh? yeah. which is probably not the flashes of mentality <laughs> but far out no that's pretty cool bro punish myself punish my body on the drink and then punish my body buddy fitness yeah, training balance oh. it out yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, some, yeah some fellas can do it but, yeah I don't know I've tried it a couple of times but bro just get the this, oh, that sick feeling is horrific I am um, I just had a great day the other day, mm. and I done twelve. Mm. Come back the next day, and I was running with Kelly down the block, down the road here. Oh, the third rep of the first set. Oh man, I was just like, wow, what I did. 
<laughs> bro, man, that's amazing. Just as can... tight as. It, bro, what's what's harder after that? Like, and this is this is pretty off topic stuff, but yeah, because sorry, this I'm is no, no, this, no, I started it, bro. This is more, this is more, sort of r- rugby chat. But what's harder, do you think, getting getting out of bed and getting onto the field, or staying out on the field once you've started after you know a night on the drink or whatever? Nah, it'll be just getting get getting in there, there, yeah. Right? Get in there and then because when you're there, there you're, you're yeah. might as well do it. Yeah, yeah, and you just might as well just <laughs> hurt for a while, so you might as well just stay there. <laughs> oh, bro, that's yeah. crack up, dude. Um, okay, well, uh, we've just got a couple of minutes left, bro. I, yeah. won't, I won't hold you too long, nah, but nah, nah, what's sweet. your uh, so what, what's your goal for? Or what are you, where are you headed? Do you think yeah. for twenty twenty one, bro? With your, because I know you still got a, yeah. you got a, quite the career ahead. Are you still, you're, you're not, you're not as old as old uh, days. So, uh, <laughs> still what, got a what couple of haircuts in the game. No, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I still got an agent in France, and like mm. if something does come up up there, the season starts in June, and if something does come up, I'll be keen to go back up. Mm. Like I've got a, I've got a young. You family. enjoy France, eh, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess just. I've had such a great experience in France because of my time in Toulouse and we had great people. But mm. if if I did have another opportunity to go back up, maybe even if it's for another two years, I'd be keen as. Okay. But if that doesn't come to fruition, then I'm not against staying around either. Eh? We've also been away for five years. and It's lovely work, I yeah, eh, bro? Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. And got the family and uh, all that and the young ones can have their cousins. But So, yeah, if I do stay back in uh, NZ... I'd love to try have another crack at ITM. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a bit of super or something. Oh, we'll just try to get past club for forty first day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought when I came back too, bro. I came back from Japan. I was like, oh, I'll have a crack at Midas. Yeah. Roll up to club. Holy, the lungs can't even handle club. How yeah, well, that's play? it. And I saw the guys at club footy at the moment. I'm like, oh, these guys are good, man. So yeah, these young fellas that come yeah. through these days, eh, hey, bro? Holy but hecka. Definitely still still keen to stay in the game and that and have yeah. another crack. For sure, bro. My body's still good, well. Yeah. Yeah, half good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean, bro. Everyone's got those niggles there. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, bro. Well, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll chuck the bro's Instagram handle on the screen right now for you guys. You can check out what the bro gets up to. It's mostly whānau stuff. He's too humble to put his footy stuff up. But, <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, this is one of my good mates, Carl Axons. He uh, has just finished up at Toulouse, looking to get back to France. So, you know, if you guys got... I, I know all these agents want me to bloody go and play rugby again, <laughs> but guys, just go to the bro. Like, <laughs> forgot stop a, forgot stop, bothering stop bothering me. Stop bothering me. Bro, Fozzy, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play for the All Blacks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, th- thanks very much for coming on, Max. I know you nah. didn't want to nah, nah, do this sort of stuff, but pleasure. It's uh, it's important that I think our audience see hard work, bro, and yeah, yeah. and uh, what the thinking is behind a, a professional athlete and a, and a proper professional one, not not the part timer <laughs> like me. <laughs> I'm the part timer just during the week, eh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, oh, well, yeah, so. ho- hopefully you guys got something out of that, and uh, I certainly did. If you if you punish yourself during the night, you might punish yourself the next day too. <laughs> but uh, che- cheers for tuning in, Fano, and thanks a lot, X, for coming along, brother. Pleasure, brother. Sure. Thanks a lot. Man.